I've been using iOS 18 for a little over a week now and my thoughts on it are mixed. It, it almost doesn't seem like Apple. Now iOS 18 is arguably the biggest iOS update that has happened since ever. I mean, it brings a lot of stuff over that I just didn't think would ever come out from an Apple product. And I'll go over some of my favorite features here in this video and kind of let you guys know how iOS 18 has been running since it is in beta 1. Now the first thing I want to talk about isn't even the customization, which I think a lot of people are putting like a lot of emphasis on, which makes sense because it, you know, at, at face value, it is one of the biggest like cosmetic changes. But the thing I want to talk about is the, you know, the ability to lock and hide apps. This feature is so long overdue. In fact, just last month when I was uh, reviewing an Android phone with a similar app lock feature, I said in that video, why doesn't Apple do something like this? If you're an iPhone user, I know for a fact there's been one time in your life at least when you thought to yourself, gee, I really wish I could lock that one app. Can you do it? No. Well, it's here. <laughs> So to lock an app, simply just press and hold on it and you'll have the option to lock behind Face ID. Or for those of you who have like, you know, like an iPad without Face ID, don't worry, you can still lock it using Touch ID. Now I've tried to fool this as much as I can. I was looking for ways around it, maybe using like some other third party app to access that app. But no, every single time you want to access that app, you actually do have to put in Face ID or like I said, Touch ID. Once you lock an app behind Face ID or Touch ID, that app is essentially put into quarantine. Even if you open up your photo gallery and try to share a photo to the app you just locked, well, guess what? It has to be unlocked first. Like I said, I've tried to fool this many different ways and it's impossible. Every notification you get from an app that has been locked, you won't be able to see. The only thing you can see is just that, you know, the actual app, but you'll have no details, no actual text info of what that notification is saying. You actually have to tap on that notification, it scans your face or your finger, and then you get the information that that notification brought over. Similarly, if you hide an app, it'll be tucked away into your app library, which of course is also locked behind, you guessed it, Face ID or Touch ID. And by the way, if it scans your face multiple times and it gets it wrong, maybe you're, you know, you're wearing glasses or something, after the third attempt, you can put in your pin, so just make sure no one knows your pin. <laughs> It really seems like Apple is putting security first, which is great because not many people, you know, trust the addition of AI or, you know, the Apple intelligence. And if you're anything like me, we're always connected to the internet, whether it's working from home, shopping online, or just browsing the web. And, you know, especially with hacking at an all time high, protecting our personal information now is way more important than ever before. That's why I've been using Trend Micro's premium security suite. I've been using it for well over a year now, and it's an all-in-one solution that protects, you know, your Mac, your PC, and your mobile devices from hackers, viruses, and malware. Plus, it even comes with 24-7 support, so if you have any questions, ask away. One of my favorite features is the mobile security. It keeps my phones safe from malicious apps and websites. And you know, whenever I'm out and about using public Wi-Fi, the secure VPN ensures that my connection is always going to be private. Another great addition is the ID security, which monitors the dark web to keep my personal information safe and the password manager, which, you know, can manage and create hard to guess passwords securely and effortlessly. Anyone can do it. The premium security suite does cover up to 10 devices, which means it's perfect for my family. And it's been a game changer for me, both professionally and personally by providing just a nice peace of mind. So if you're looking for the ultimate protection, check out Trend Micro's premium security suite. And if you use my code Mark10, you'll get 10% off your order. The customization of iOS is long overdue, like I said, and I'm happy it's here, but its implementation is just a little bit funky. Like when using the tinted mode, it basically just puts a colored filter all over the display instead of each app having its own style for that tint mode. And it, you know, on one hand, it's nice because you don't have to wait for the app to be updated by the developer. But on the other hand, it just looks wonky and some apps are even hard to see due to the poor contrast. I really hope this does get fixed since we're still in beta, but if you do look at Apple's own demos, it seems like it works the way that they wanted it to work. I just hope they change their mind because it, it doesn't look good with a lot of the colors because the, the contrast it's lacking and some text is even hard to read. So Apple, 
please don't let this be the final implementation. I do also appreciate that we can change the lock screen shortcuts finally, again, long overdue. This is great, especially for those people that have like a lot of smart home stuff. I think the ability to add a shortcut to, you know, open and close your garage door or lock your front door is pretty cool. Not gonna lie, I could have sure, you know, used this years ago. <laughs> Now, I do finally like the ability to actually put your apps anywhere you want on the home screen. I, I kind of leave like a gap right there and put all my apps toward the bottom. It just helps me because I use my phone one handed like 99% of the time. So that just means my thumb, and this is a Pro Max, by the way. So it's a pretty large phone in and of itself. So, you know, before with all the apps being forced to the top, if you're using the phone one handed, your thumb has to do a quite a bit of stretching to get all the way up top. Now oh, I can put all my apps toward the bottom. It's just easier and it just kind of adds a nice feeling of new. I know Android guys, before you type in the comments, we've had this since like World War One. We know, everyone knows. By the way, yeah, everyone knows it's not new, but it is new on iOS. And so I guess now everyone can take advantage of this amazing feature that's been around since World War One. Another change I like personally is having just better reactions on iMessage instead of having the boring, like the heart, the thumbs up, the thumbs down, and you know, all the rest. You can finally react using emojis. In fact, you can react using any emoji you want. Now, I've never really used the older style reacts because they just seem a little passive aggressive. Now, another great addition to iMessage that I personally cannot wait to test out is the addition of RCS, finally. Now, for those of you who don't know, RCS will finally let you send high quality photos and videos to your Android friends and of course vice versa. Because as, because as of right now, the videos look like they were recorded on a rusty toaster. But not only that, RCS will also be encrypted for the first time ever between iOS and Android texting, whereas SMS, the one that we're all used to, you know, the green bubble, that is not encrypted, so you're not really safe texting, like, at all. <laughs> RCS is amazing and I'm super happy Apple is implementing this, uh, but it's not here yet in this beta. It is coming in future betas. So the second that, that it comes out, oh boy, I am definitely going to put it through the ringer and I'm going to be testing it out. So if you guys want to see that, hit that subscribe. Another change that I like to iMessage personally is the ability to finally schedule a message. It's finally here. Apps like Telegram and Google Messages already had this and it basically works the same exact way. Open up the iMessage thread, tap on the plus, scroll down, and you'll see send later. Now, once you tap on it, you can control the date and time for that message to be sent at, but it only works at two weeks or up to two weeks in advance. You can't schedule it out, for example, like 16, 17, 18, or plus days later. Apple, why? You gave us this feature, but you're still limiting it. It makes no sense. With Telegram, I can schedule a message a year in advance. You know, I don't know when that would be necessary, but two weeks, you know, make it a little longer. <laughs> now, when it comes to performance and battery life of iOS 18, weirdly enough, it actually runs better than iOS 17 did, at least for me. Battery life has gotten a bit better, and as far as bugs and glitches go, I haven't really run in, you know, run into any, aside from like the very first day when I downloaded the beta, the phone got really hot, it was a little bit lagging, but I guess that's just because the phone was kind of still downloading everything that needs to be downloading, you know, all the features, all that good stuff. I don't know how that works, but after the first day, it's been incredibly smooth. I mean, really, as far as beta one goes, this has probably been the smoothest beta one that I've personally experienced. And believe me, when I say this, I've experienced a lot of them, all of them. <laughs> so, so not bad Apple. So what about all the AI goodies? Well, those are not here yet. Apple is partnering with OpenAI, for those of you who don't know, and Siri will finally be integrated with ChatGPT, which means Siri, for the first time ever, is actually going to be helpful, you know? So <laughs> there's that. The thing I like about Apple's implementation of AI is that it's going to be on every app. It's gonna be system-wide. And the more you use it, the more it knows you and knows what you like and, the, and what you dislike. It's like having an, an assistant that literally gets better as time goes on. That's incredible. I mean, j just as an example, imagine getting an email from your boss telling you uh, about, you know, telling you the location of a meeting you have to go to, like in the movies, right? And then a few days go by and you totally forget the address. Well, you can just simply ask the Apple AI Siri, hey, where's the location of the meeting with my boss? And Apple AI will just find that information in your phone automatically for you. And then it'll even pull up the Apple Maps and tell you where you need to go, how long it'll take you to get there. That is insane, and that's happening all on device. 
In fact, anytime that something needs to be sent to the cloud for you know further knowledge or features, you'll get a pop-up asking you if you want to continue with ChatGPT. You always have that option. So if you don't want to use ChatGPT, you don't have to. You can still use Apple's own AI, just in a, a little bit more limiting, you know, because it's just not actually using the cloud. It's happening all on device. So naturally, it's going to be a little bit more limited than using the cloud. So for now, iOS 18 is more of a cosmetic change. And don't get me wrong, that's definitely you know, great, but the actual helpful enhancements of iOS 18 is coming later this year with the addition of Apple AI and of course, ChatGPT. I assume, like I said, right during the release of the, um, of the iPhone 16 series. So, uh, you know, so far I like it and I think many do as well, but let me know what you guys think and what your opinions on this iOS 18 and the Apple AI and ChatGPT integration are. So I want to know. Leave me your comments down below. And as always, this was Mark from Mark's Tech. If you guys did enjoy today's video, definitely click that like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Adios.